This Ford truck is so rare, most people in the US have probably never even heard of it. It was only released and used in the South African market, making it a gem to find anywhere else in the world. And that's not all. There's a couple of other ultra-rare Ford trucks, which are like a collector's dream coming true. These are four of the most rare pickups made by Ford. Starting off at number four is the Ford Bantam. Now, there's a really good reason why you might have never come across this unique little compact pickup. The thing is, this was tailor-made for the South African market. So finding it anywhere else is really rare. Over the years, the Ford Bantam came in three different versions. The first, from 1983 to 1990, was designed to rival Nissan's B140 and Volkswagen's Caddy and was built on the Ford Escort platform. The second version, running from 1990 to 2001, was constructed on the Mazda 323 base. Finally, the third iteration, produced from 2002 to 2011, used the Ford Fiesta as its foundation. Even though people rarely get to hear about it much, the Bantam has earned a reputation as both a sturdy workhorse and a great personal vehicle. While production ceased in 2011, there are rumors about a potential new version hitting South African roads. Small pickups might not be everyone's cup of tea, but you've got to admit they have their charm. Plus, they're more affordable, compact, and fuel efficient compared to larger models like the Toyota Hilux or the Nissan Navara. Their maneuverability makes them suitable for both work and daily commutes. Typically, these trucks sport a monocoque or unibody construction, simplifying manufacturing and enabling parts sharing with regular cars. The Ford Bantam 1.4 TDCI model, for instance, packs a punch with its four-cylinder engine measuring 1,399 cc, generating 73.7 horsepower at 3,000 revolutions per minute and 149.1 foot-pounds of torque. Equipped with an eight-speed automatic gearbox, the Bantam offers both front-wheel drive and optional all-wheel drive configurations. It comes loaded with features like electric mirrors and windows, front fog lights, a color-matching grille and bumpers, a cab protector, a sliding rear window, and a truck bed cover. And that's not all. Owners of this rare pickup also get to enjoy features like a radio and CD player with four speakers, plus interior locking, air conditioning, an alarm system, and an immobilizer. Now, despite how rare the Ford Bantam is, it's still just one of the many pickups by the company that just flew under the radar, just like this next one. At number three, it's the Ford Pampa. You might start to see some similarities between a few of these pickups, because just like the Bantam, the Ford Pampa was also a truck that was mostly marketed towards a specific region. In this case, it was Brazil. Made from 1982 to 1997, this was a sleek coupe utility pickup drawing inspiration from Ford's Corcel and Del Rey models. It quickly claimed the title of Brazil's best-selling coupe utility, reigning supreme until the arrival of the Ford Courier, a Fiesta-based pickup in 1982. The Pampa marked Ford's entry as the second contender in this segment, following Fiat's Fiorino, which was rooted in the Fiat 147 platform. I've gotta say, this pickup definitely had a unique vibe to it. I mean, even the name Pampa evoked the image of a robust horse, which is honestly a fitting symbol for this sturdy thing. Unlike its Fiat counterpart, the Pampa boasted a rugged design paired with a cozy car-like cabin, plus a spacious cargo area reminiscent of American-style F100 pickups from that era. Plus, there's another thing that set it apart from Fiat's other offerings. This was that the Ford Pampa opted for a rigid rear axle and semi-elliptical springs, which were ideal for heavy loads. This decision made the Pampa better suited for hauling payloads of up to 1,367 pounds. Under the hood, it shared the same reliable 1.6-liter engine and manual gearbox as the Corcel, optimized with a differential ratio of 1 to 4. With a front suspension borrowed from the Corcel, but beefed up to handle heavier loads, the Pampa delivered consistent performance. Its 1.6-liter engine churned out 66 horsepower on gasoline and 69 horsepower on alcohol fuel, propelling it to a top speed of 100 miles per hour. 
the relocated 76-liter fuel tank behind the cabin ensured ample range for long journeys. It was also equipped with creature comforts like a digital clock, air conditioning, adjustable head restraints, radio, and inertia reel seat belts. So all in all, the Pampa offered the best of both worlds, keeping in mind both convenience and comfort. Its design enhancements, coupled with its versatility and dependable performance, cemented its status as a South American small pickup icon. And because of how successful it was during its time, it basically forced competitors like Volkswagen and Chevrolet to introduce their own similar models, such as the Volkswagen Severo and Chevrolet Chevy 500 in the late 80s. Now there's one other rare pickup by Ford which has just as much appeal. At number two, it's the Ford Durango. The Durango is a real standout in the automotive world and its origin story is a huge reason why. Born as a coupe utility vehicle, it was a cozy ride designed for just two people, and Ford Motor Company produced it in small quantities from 1979 to 1982. Now, what makes the Durango so fascinating is how it came to be. Ford joined forces with National Coach Works, a company based in Los Angeles, California, to bring this unique vehicle to life. Ford didn't aim to create just another run-of-the-mill truck or a replacement for the Ford Ranchero which stopped production in 1979. Instead, they were focusing on taking on the smaller Chevrolet El Camino, so they cooked up the Durango to offer at their dealerships. The very first Durango was a labor of love crafted by Jim Stevenson and his sons at their workshop in Pacoima, California. They took on the difficult take of shaping the body by hand. To bring the Durango to life, National Coach Works used the body of the Ford Fairmont Futura, an effective two-door car. They stripped off the roof and rear seats, adding a flat cargo bed made of fiberglass right behind the front seats. They even installed a new window behind the seats and reimagined the back of the truck with a fold-down tailgate. Back then, the tailgate also doubled as a holder for the license plate and taillights, but they had to include a warning not to drive with it down. Under the hood, the Durango packed just one engine option, a 200 cubic inch inline six, which was right in the middle of the Fairmont's lineup. Paired with a three-speed automatic transmission, it delivered a decent performance. Now, pinning down the exact number of Durangos made is tricky since neither company kept detailed records. Estimates put the count anywhere from around 200 to 350, which is a pretty small number. This makes this one of the rarest Ford pickups you can come across since very few of these gems are still around nowadays. That said, only one other truck can outmatch this in terms of rarity. And at number one, it's the 1967 Ford Mercury M250 Crew Cab. This is a real gem of a pickup, and its rarity sets it apart from the crowd. With only six ever made, it's a true collector's item. This truck hails from the M Series lineup, mainly marketed by Ford's Mercury division in Canada from 1947 to 1968. Known for its rugged utility and unique design, the M250 Crew Cab is definitely a part of automotive history. Luckily, one such vehicle was preserved by Brad Morrison, a resident of Vancouver, British Columbia. He stumbled upon this hidden treasure during his daily commute for more than a decade. After spotting it nestled among weeds for so long, he decided to take action. Purchasing the neglected crew cab marked the beginning of a three-year restoration journey for Morrison. During the restoration process, Morrison was determined to maintain the truck's authenticity. He salvaged and reused classic parts wherever possible, ensuring that the colors remain true to their original hues. Keeping the tire size as per the specifications from its late 1967 production was crucial for maintaining its historical accuracy. Remarkably, the truck still retained its original 352 V8 engine, adding to its historical significance. Originally used as a fleet vehicle, the M250 Crew Cab is believed to have served with the Forestry Service for a significant period. After the restoration was complete, Morrison went on an unforgettable journey with the truck from Vancouver to the 2023 F100 Grand Nationals in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, getting about 6,000 miles on the Mercury's odometer. 
His dedication paid off when the truck was awarded the title of Best Crew Cab of 2023 at the show. So, as far as rare Ford trucks go, it's kinda hard to beat this. Now, if you wanna check out some more content on trucks, make sure to click on this next video.